Hello there, this is Business Daily, your one-stop program for all you need to know about major developments in the world of economy and business. On this program, we are set to bring you expert and up-to-the-minute analysis on key issues across different sectors of the Nigerian economy as they provide actionable solutions to chart a path of sustainable growth. I am your host, Christiana Amodu Otinya. Thank you for joining in. On today's edition of the program, we will be taking a look at burning issues in the Nigerian economy. There's been a lot of positions by experts and economic watchers with regards to how the tide can be turned towards prosperity for the nation's economy. I will be joined in the course of the program by Dr. Rislanuddin Mohammed, member Delhi Trust Board of Economists, and he will be taking us through his perspectives on the mood of the nation's economy. A lot has been said about how we can ensure that the Nigerian economy does better. Basically, most Nigerians are not really concerned about reeling out figures, talking about gross domestic products, inflation numbers, or maybe what the terms of trade or balance of trade of a nation entail. A lot of them are concerned about what is going into their pockets and also how they can live sustainably. Talking about in recent times, we have seen household incomes dwindle in the country and inflation is steadily eroding purchasing power power in Nigeria. So how can we have a holistic approach to tackle these issues? We've seen private think tanks like the Nigerian Economic Summit Group, the NESG, come out to say the time to act now. Like the former managing director of the International Monetary Fund, Christian Lagarde, who now heads the ECB, as she would say, it is better to repair the roof while the sun is still up. How can we ensure that we move back to a part of growth, move back basically to the glory days of the country and ensure that more Nigeria, Nigerians live sustainably on good income? I will hold my horses here and take a short break. When I come back, my guests will be joining me and the program will continue. Please stay. Welcome back and thank you for still staying there with us on the program. Now I have with me on the program Dr. Rislanuddin Mohammed, member Delhi Trust Board of Economists. He is joining us virtually on the program today and he is our guest for the program today. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you very much. Thank it was a pleasure to speak to you about the nation's economy. Yeah. Now, before we comment, I just want to reel out some of the key macroeconomic indicators currently we have currently in the country for both our viewers, for the benefit of our viewers. I know you already know these indicators. Now, we have inflation doing at 19.64%. The NPR, that's the monetary policy rate of the Central Bank of Nigeria, the MPC, the Monetary Policy Committee, is at 14%. The cash reserve ratio, the CRR, 27.5%. Nigeria's gross domestic product, that's according to the last data we have from the National Bureau of Statistics, is put at 3 3.11%. Unemployment rate at 33.3%. Now, there's been a lot of conversation around the unemployment rate because this data goes very, very far way back. Why have we not seen the new data coming from the NBS? Exchange rate 427 naira to a dollar. Now, the NGX, the Nigeria exchange market cap, finished Friday at 226.79 trillion naira. The NGX yet today returns at 15.58% in positive territory, of course. Remember some years ago, we saw the Nigerian stock exchange sitting tall, opening the year as the best performing exchange in the world, as according to Bloomberg. Now, how are we going to see inflation also affect the stock market? Nigeria's debt size is put at 29 0.08 trillion naira. A lot have been said about the bourgeoning debt of Nigeria. Brent crude, that's talking about crude oil, which is largely the mainstay of the Nigerian economy. Brent crude is trading at $96.72 .96 per barrel. External reserves at $38.88 billion. PMI, that's the Purchasing Managers Index, 
at 49.6. PMI largely tell us, tells us what's happening with the manufacturing sector and how the sector is faring. Now, let me bring my guest in now. Now, you have seen what the numbers are saying. It is normally said that numbers do not lie because the numbers, of course, tell you what's happening with the economy. I would like to ask you now, I want you to calibrate for me. You have monitored the whole process. What is the mood of the Nigerian economy for you? Well, thank you very much again for having me, Christiana. Um, I think Niger Nigerian economy, as uh, we are today, is um, experiencing a very slow process of growth. Why did I say growth? Because um, the GDP numbers you have highlighted is showing a positive gro growth of 3.11%. Um, However, however, that 3.11%, if you juxtapose it with, um, for example, population growth is 2.7%, but by the time you look at other um, key economic indicators, you can at, at best describe the GDP is low and rather epileptic, uh, not strong enough to push the economy out of especially the two successive recessions that we have had uh, from 2016. Uh, we had one in 2016, and then we had another one uh, COVID-induced. So the, the gross level is not enough to propel the economy to sustainable growth, to the level where you, you can be able to see uh, low unemployment, you can be able to see manageable interest rate, you can be able to see manageable inflation rate, you can be able to, on a general note, to see the what we call the misery index being as low as possible. Misery index is basically a summation of uh, inflation rate, interest rate, unemployment rate, and then we subtract the percentage change in the GDP, either year on year or quarter depending on the on the data that you have based on uh, Professor Heinke's uh, model. But if you look at the misery index today in Nigeria, given the data, now you can do the arithmetic yourself, you can you know that it's, it's something in the region of upwards of um, 70%. That is, if you don't even if you only look at unemployment, because in a developing country's context, you may need to look at underemployment. And based on official data, if you take and underemployment um, uh, data is uh, about 22.5 percent. By the time you add it to the 33.3 percent, and like you rightly stated, is um, the data is becoming stale, stale in the sense that um, I think uh, it is uh, as at uh, September third quarter, 2021, Correct. something like that. So it is uh, it's getting rather stale. Inflation, for example, we have reached a very high level of, you know, 17-year high, like you stated, of 19.64%. Uh, uh, the last time we have had this uh, uh, situation, it, it went as far as 24.32% last uh, um, 17 years ago, sometimes, I think, September or uh, in 2005. That means that we are at a very thick level of inflation. And inflation is a terrible disease. It can disturb everybody. It can impact on our way of life. It can impact. The inflation that we are experiencing is an is inflationary level that is, can easily be you know, noticed by an average Nigerian. You go to the market today, you go back tomorrow, you see a different price. Why? Because food price is going up especially the food index, as well as the energy and transportation index have all been going up. So that has given the, the monetary authorities really a very difficult uh, uh, situation in terms of um, capacity to, to manage, especially given the fact that um, we are an import-dependent economy. So what is happening, for example, in Ukraine and, and Russia directly impacting on us, we, we export well, majorly petroleum products. Now we are having challenge even exporting the petroleum products. The price has gone up. Nigerian economy is not benefiting. So the, the that impact or the fact that the the inflationary trend uh, is not 
of solar demand driven. It's not as a result of what is called excess demand, meaning that there are more people, uh, simple definition of inflation, more people chasing uh, fewer, fewer goods, goods. And so on. It is not. Basically, yeah, basically what we are having now is um, supply challenges. Uh, it's not that people are demanding more, that is why. But there is limited supply. Why do we have the limited supply? Because we have challenges in importation, we have challenges in, uh, in, the, in the forex market, and uh, those challenges, if, if, and then whatever is imported, it comes in with its own inflationary uh, trend because, uh, because of the high you know, level, level of um, exchange rate, and then cost of importation, and then it adds up to the individual uh, consumer. Um, of course, there is very little uh, the, the indi individual consumer uh, may not have the capacity to absorb whatever is imported. And that leads to another challenge in terms of growth. It means that there may be saturation from the point of uh, manufacturing companies. They may be begin to have problem, you know, selling their products. One, they cannot sell below, below their cost. And if they want to sell above their cost and make some markup, the market may not be able to absorb. And that may impliedly lead to uh, uh, slow growth. That may lead to increase in un unemployment. And um, in our own context, it may also have uh, some impact on our level of uh, security. I, I like that you have given us the background to this discussion, especially with inflation, because whenever you speak about the economy in recent times, inflation tops the chart in terms of that directly affects the disposable income of Nigerians. And you have mentioned that we need, the central bank has a lot of a lot on its table. A lot of people actually say they don't want to be God in a Mephili at this time because it's looking like the task is becoming Herculean at this point with ensuring that inflation tapers in the country. However, I want to still stick a little bit with the discussion on inflation. So much has been said about the fact that our inflation is cost push. Like you rightly mentioned, it's not a, a case of plenty of people chasing fewer goods. I want to ask your opinion on what you think, Dr. Rislanudin, on what's a sustainable solution to help inflation taper down, even if not in short term, looking at long term. Okay, thank you very much. Um, first, you know, um, like you rightly stated, um, the job of uh, the CBN governor uh, his team, as well as the Monetary Policy Committee, is very difficult at this time. And it is always difficult. It always has um, challenges all over the world. It's not only Nigeria. Um, the UK inflation rate is at a 40-year high, for example, 10.4%, and so on. And the, all most countries across the globe are having these challenges, um, really induced by challenges in the uh, Russia-Ukraine war. But coming to specifics, um, in Nigerian context, for example, CBN for the first time after over a year or so, tried to, in their May MPC meeting, try to uh, increase the MPR rate by 150 basis points to 13% in, in, in an attempt to address inflation. But the CBN uh, MPCs themselves appreciated the fact that um, that may not be enough, in the sense that, um, like you rightly said, it, our inflation is cost push and uh, monetary instruments may be uh, inadequate in terms of you know, taming that inflationary trend. Second, in, um, in the July meeting also, they increased the uh, M uh, MPR by 100 basis points to 14%, which is what we have now. And uh, the inflation uh, numbers came up, it's keep on going down. So it, it defies the, the attempt by the central bank to uh, to raise interest. Now, the responsibility of central bank is that of financial uh, system stability. So basically, CBN are doing their responsibility. But the other aspect, issues relating to fiscal policy, issues relating to trade policy, are uh, responsibilities of respective uh, uh, agencies of government, not the central bank. In this context, um, Raising interest rate to uh, address inflation, of course, 
at any point in time you have inflation uh, uh, higher than interest rate, you have what is called negative interest rate. That disincentivizes investment because you are not earning anything from your investment. So raising the rates may, may address that challenge. Raising the rates also raising the rates may help in uh, uh, bring, bringing down the, the inflation. Yes. Doctor, I want, to, I want you to hold on your thoughts. Um, we'll take a short break. When we, when we return, we'll continue more to talk about how we can ensure that the Nigerian economy does better generally. Please don't go anywhere. We'll be back shortly. Welcome back and thank you for still staying there with us. If you are just joining the program, this is Business Daily coming to you on your channel of choice, Trust TV. I still have my guest with me, Dr. Rislanuddin Mohammed. He's a member of the Lee Trust Board of Economists. And just before we went on that short breather, he was telling us what should be done basically as actionable solutions to help bring down inflation, even if not in the short term, but in the long term, to help bring, bring some sort of soccer to Nigerians. Doctor, can you continue your thoughts? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I was just trying to, to by before the break by the central bank in an attempt to bring down inflation in an attempt to minimize the negative, um, level of uh, negative interest rate. Now, that has been actually failed. And it is evidently clear that at any point in time, CBN raised rates, that's Will, uh, is basically um, will jeopardize growth because it will make cost of borrowing higher. It will impliedly make cost of goods and services higher. It will also impliedly make, uh, if there is no uh, enough absorptive capacity of the economy to absorb the shock of increase in prices uh, from the manufacturing companies, then, um, those companies may may fold up or reduce production, and then unemployment will will, um, will also increase. So it's a very delicate trade-off. Very so delicate indeed. Central bank continue to raise rates. Yes, central bank are basically doing their um, responsibility. Uh, their mandate is financial uh, system stability, and there are other agencies of government that are responsible for issues relating to uh, growth majorly fiscal policy and trade policy. So my, my own suggestion is central bank are duty bound to attack inflation. It is their responsibility and they're duty bound to raise rates. And we have examples. Can we look at um, example of what happened in the 1980s in the United States, for example, and uh, maybe uh, adopt some part of it within the peculiarity of our own situation? Um, the chairman of Fed at that time in 1980, Paul, Paul uh, Volcker, they had this problem of inflation going as high as 10%, just like they have now. And he raised rates about 20%. Of course, inflation came down, but it led to 1981 recession. Now, the American economy has the capacity to absorb. It's a big economy. It's the largest economy yes. in the world. So they can be able to absorb. They have a robust manufacturing companies. They have a robust economy so they can be able to absorb that shock can nigerian economy absorb up today and say we are raising mpc we are raising rates for example from the the current 14 percent to 20 percent above inflation rate can inflation come down i don't think so 
Will you also be will get into recession? I think so. I think we'll get into a deeper recession. So what is the solution? I think there should be some form of pragmatism. And that pragmatism should involve not only the CBM, but the fiscal authorities in terms of addressing challenges with, with um, issues relating to, to intervention, issues relating to, to taxes, issues relating to, to government spending uh, level of the, and so on. But the central bank can also intervene because they do not have money. We know that government may not have the capacity to provide that intervention. CBN has been doing that. What is important is for CBN to come up with actionable, workable intervention policies, targeted intervention policies that support the real sector. And that uh, intervention should be adequately monitored. For example, there is nothing wrong in central bank looking at key manufacturing sectors that are having challenges, for example, with importation requisite inputs to support uh, their company. There is nothing wrong in CBN intervening to support them. There is nothing wrong in CBN intervening to uh, provide uh, low interest rate support to some of those companies because there is multiply effect of not allowing the economy to go into a deeper recession. But as it is now, the, I can predict that uh, the, the next monetary policy uh, committee meeting, CBM will attempt to, to raise rates to address inflation, but I don't think this, our own peculiar inflationary situation can be addressed by simply raising interest rate. It rather, it will rather have of jeopardizing our fragile growth. Our growth is very, very fragile. And if interest continue to go up, it will jeopardize the fragility of the growth and it will end up impacting more on the economy. It may send the economy into recession. Dr. Islanodin, I want to, I, while you were speaking, you spoke about issues about taxes, basically how we can get it right. And you have rightly mentioned that the inflation we have currently has defied my, um, the monetary policy tools. And you mentioned what the CBN needs to do. I want to, I want you to also speak to some issues that the Nigeria Economic Summit Group raised in the communique that came out after the board had their meeting because it's in line with some of the things you just spoke about. Now, the communicate was titled Of Hope and Despair, Not Too Late to Turn the Curve. The think tank said Nigeria's revenue challenges cannot be divorced from leakages through large scale crude oil theft, difficult operating environment for businesses, and lack of innovation in tax collection and administration. Now, this is the NESG speaking, and we know for a good number of years, the NESG has followed the economy, monitored economic development. I want you to answer this question vis-a-vis -vis looking at the debt situation we have in the country. Our debt has continued to balloon, although there's the argument that these monies are being spent on infrastructure development. So basically dividend for the monies that are being borrowed. Now, this is the NESG saying we need to turn back the curve. We need to turn the tide back to prosperity. They mentioned crude oil theft, difficult environment for businesses, tax collection and, and administration. What are your thoughts on this? Oh, yeah, I, I think basically what they're saying is true because um, uh, the NESG is basically a, 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 um, you know, a pressure group of um, operators, quite unlike um, our own society, for example, Nigerian Economic Society. Um, the NESG are basically operators. So when they speak, they speak from what is the reality on ground. For example, when they, say, when, when they talk about taxes, for example, we, we all know about uh, duplication of taxes which add to burden of, um, of companies which stifle their capacity. You know about the, all this uh, um, difficult environment to operate. And if you recall, I did mention the, the underlying imperative for a target by the central bank, for example, targeted intervention on specific industries, specific companies that need support, which will have direct impact on, on the economy, not just general support, specific support. Uh, they can identify the, I think they are, sometimes back to this, this kind of a 100, 400 or something like that. So a, companies need to be targeted to provide this support so that they can pick up, so that the economy can pick up 
so that we don't get into recession and so that people will have jobs and uh, there will there will be no stability in terms of our performance of the economy. And I uh, on the issue of um, of debt, um, there is always this argument of, um, of of our debt being manageable, of our debt being within um, uh, the uh, the prism definition as defined by by the World Bank and IMF yeah, in terms of our uh, uh, debt to revenue ratio. Uh, and, and debt to GDP ratio, meaning yeah. that our debt to GDP ratio is okay. Uh, our problem is uh, revenue challenge. I, I, I don't Do think. Um, Doctor, we have uh, very short time, so I would want you to wrap up uh, the thought. Okay. Yes. Okay. I, 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 I don't think we are. We are really. Come uh, out to say that we have to manage our debts. Our debt is ballooning. The capacity to repay may be a challenge. Mm. So. We need to manage our debt. We need to, for, for example, for now, hold on to borrowing. Look at how we can raise our internet generation revenue. Talk about um, um, SEPT in terms of crude oil SEPT. Stop it. Attack it so that our revenue base will increase. Uh, improve, make efficiency, efficiency in terms of tax collection. Because in an economy that is fragile, it is not advisable to raise taxes. But, but make tax collection more efficient. Because if you make tax collection more efficient, it will address the challenges of the uh, that don't have anything and uh, just disturbing them, asking them for taxes by terms of expand, expand the network of existing taxes. No need to increase. If you expand the network, make the collection more efficient, the revenue, our revenue will go up and uh, our capacity to uh, interest in uh, appetite rather to borrow may may reduce because uh, given our level of uh, revenue now i don't think it is advisable for we have 30 seconds that. doctor again. thank you very much all right thank you so much dr rislanuddin mohammed member daily trust board of economists thank you for joining me on the program today thank you very much and uh, i i want to say that uh, i want to appreciate uh, daily trust i know when they started as um, weekly trust and then uh, coming into daily trust and Sunday trust and weekly Saturday trust. Now there is a daily trust TV, and I understand that um, today is the first anniversary of uh, daily trust television. And uh, you have already gone a long way, and I wish you all the best. Thank you so much, Dr. Rislanuddin Mohammed. There, thank you for your best wishes. And that, this is where we draw the curtains for the program today. Don't forget, you can catch up on all our programs on Trust TV social media platforms, interviews, on, and the news update on what's happening in the country and Nigeria's socioeconomic development. My name is Christiana Amadou Otenya. Enjoy the rest of your day.